أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه وعلى جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وأصحابه وسلم أتاكم رمضان شهر مبارك فرض الله عليكم الصيام فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر من حرم خيرها فقد حرم أو كما قال صدقت يا رسول الله In the name of Allah most gracious most merciful all praise is due to our creator cherisher nourisher and sustainer The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam in this hadith he says there comes to you the blessed month of Ramadan Indeed we are in the last days of that month فرض الله عليكم الصيام Allah has prescribed fasting made obligatory fasting for those who are able to fast during this month and that is almost coming to conclusion فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر this month contains a night greater in value than a thousand months and that night the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said تحروا ليلة القدر في الوتر من عشر الأواخير من رمضان search for ليلة القدر in the odd nights of the last ten nights of Ramadan and tonight is one of those nights a month mentioned in the Quran in relation to the Quran a night mentioned in the Quran in relation to the Quran شهر رمضان الذي أنزل فيه القرآن إنا أنزلناه في ليلة القدر both the month is the only month mentioned by name in the Quran mentioned in relation to the Quran and of course the sacred night فيه ليلة خير من ألف شهر it has a night it contains a night greater in value in spiritual value than 83 years which is more than a ordinary and ordinary human life and perchance we connect to the power of that night of power which is the Quran is a conduit of which Allah is the ultimate source of that power it's hoped that we on this night and these nights repent for our past the sins we may have committed the wrongs we have done and positively focus on our future and we do so with revived commitment and a heightened degree of spirituality, insha'Allah. We are now coming to conclusion of our series. Alhamdulillah, our series, Tawjihat Akhlaqiyah, Min at Tajarub Il Yawmiyah, Moral Guidance from Everyday Experiences. There is an incident that I want us to reflect upon. There was a lecture advertised in London of a prominent Muslim speaker. And of course, many people queued up to attend and a group of young guys were waiting to enter the hall. When one of them noticed a young lady that was not so well dressed, not, I mean, dressed uh, appropriately what he felt, she had a tight jeans on and no scarf and short sleeve. And he wanted to go tell her that she should have dressed properly. And the, his friend said, don't, it's not your business, leave her. You know, she came. He says, no, but she's coming to an Islamic lecture. It's not like she's going to a movie to the mall. She's going to an Islamic lecture. She should know she should dress appropriately, just not on. And they somehow eventually convinced him, please just don't belittle her, you know, just don't say anything. Nonetheless, he was very angry. And they went into the hall, and the speaker spoke, alhamdulillah, took some questions, answered as best as he could. And then the guys noticed that the young lady was also standing in line to ask a question. When her turn came to ask the question, she said, I don't have a question, I just want to become a Muslim. And she took the shahada. And we know the Prophet said, Amma alimta anna al-Islam, 
يَهْدِمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهِ Embracing Islam removes the sin of the past. Hadith documented in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. As they came out, the friends told this angry guy, the angry friend of theirs, imagine you spoke to her and belittled her before the lecture. She may have gone home, but now she goes home better than all of us, having embraced Islam and free from sin. Now, with regard to this, it doesn't mean if somebody is not doing something right, you shouldn't tell them. Don't get me wrong, because don't misuse this, what I'm saying now. I'm just saying, the question is about how sometimes we are judgmental about things, and we get angry about some things. And very often we see the faults of other people, and we should rectify where we can, in an amicable manner. But sometimes we become so upset about the faults of other people, but very rarely do we notice our own faults, or... We are quick to reprimand other people, but get upset when other people rectify us. It's regard to this kind of situation that I want us to reflect on the words documented by Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, a saying which some attribute to Sayyid Abdul Qadir al-Jilani, Qaddas Allah sirra, words that offer advice embodying the highest standard of social humility. So here, the wording is, كُلُّ مَا يَرَى نَفْسَهُ خَيْرًا مِّنْ أَحَدٍ مِّنْ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ فَهُوَ مُتَكَبِّرٌ Anyone who considers himself superior to others, he is arrogant. وَالْمُتَكَبِّرُ هُوَ الَّذِي إِذَا وُعِضَ أَنِفَ وَإِذَا وَعَضَ عَنَّفَ The arrogant person, the sign of an arrogant person, when he gives advice, he embarrasses, he humiliates, he takes pleasure in belittling the other person, to mortify the other person. But when he is advised, he gets upset, becomes rude sometimes. On the other hand, التواضح هو ألا يلقي العبد أحد من الناس إلا رأى له الفضل عليه ويقول عسى أن يكون عند الله خيرا مني. The humble person is that person when he meets anyone, he assumes in his mind. There must be some way this man is better than me, or this person is better than me. فَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ صَغِيرًا قُلْتَ هَذَا لَمْ يَعْصِ اللَّهُ وَأَنَا عَصَيْتُهُ فَلَا شَكَّ أَنَّهُ خَيْرٌ مِنِّي If he sees a child, he says the child is so small, innocent, he has not had much time for sin, he has not sinned, so because of that, he is better than me. وَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ كَبِيرًا قُلْتَ هَذَا خَيْرٌ مِنِّي عَبَدَ اللَّهَ قَبْلِي When he meets someone, when he meets someone who's elder or bigger, he says he must be better than me because he's been worshipping Allah and serving Allah long before me. So he must be better than me. وَإِنْ رَيْتَ عَالِمًا قُلْتَ هَذَا قَدْ أُعْطِيَ مَا لَمْ أُعْطَى وَبَلَغَ مَا لَمْ أَبْلُغْ وَعَلِمَ مَا جَهِلْتْ فَكَيْفَ أَكُونُ مِثْلَهُ When he meets a person who's knowledgeable, he says, Allah has given him what I don't have. He has reached a station which I haven't reached. He knows what I don't know. How could I be better than him? Then he meets someone who's ignorant. وَإِن كَانَ جَاهِلًا قُلْتْ هَذَا عَصَى اللَّهُ تَعَالَى بِجَهْلٍ وَأَنَا عَصَيْتُ اللَّهُ بِعِلْمٍ فَحُجَّةُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى عَلَيَّ أَكْبَرٍ This person who is ignorant, he may have sinned against Allah, but he sins out of ignorance. I know what is wrong and right, and I still sin. So Allah's case is stronger against me than against him. So he must be better than me. وَإِنْ رَأَيْتَ كَافِرًا قُلْتَ لَا أَدْرِي عَسَى أَنْ يُسْلِمْ وَيُخْتَمْ لَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ الْعَمَلِ وَيَنْسَلَّ بِإِسْلَامِهِ مِنْ ذُنُوبِهِ كَمَا تَنْسَلُّ الشَّعْرَ مِنْ الْعَجِينِ فَيَكُونُ هُوَ غَدًا مِنَ الْمُقَرَّبِينَ وَأَكُونُ أَنَا مِنَ الْمُبْعَدِينَ if it's a person who's not a believer, he'll say, I do not know. Perhaps he'll become a Muslim and his life will change. And he'll end up in life doing better good deeds and better deeds than me. And perchance, Allah will remove all his sins. And then at the end of life, he may be closer to Allah than I am. So he could be better than me. You see, besides listening to the, mashallah, absolutely beautiful, melodious recitation, with passive attention, passive attention. May we be inspired to the implementation of Quranic values 
leading to our personal transformation. This is what Ramadan is all about. A sa'i'un, spiritual journey, individually. We need to reflect the prophetic righteousness which was manifested in his personal engagement and in his dealings with society. His etiquette of social interaction was empowering rather than controlling, inspiring rather than dictating, uplifting rather than judging, seeking commitment rather than dominance. He ignited the moral imagination and the spiritual consciousness of those people who were around him. Therefore, he could take a shepherd boy like Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a noble woman like Khadija, a slave like Bilal, a nurse like Umm Ayman, a foreigner like Salman al-Farisi, a wealthy man like Abu Bakr, a Jew like Abdullah bin Salam, an outcast like Julebi, and embrace them equally in his companionship with respect, with dignity, and with compassion. The Prophet taught us righteousness by his example. That to be good, you don't have to be judgmental. To be good, you don't have to be judgmental. To be equal, you don't all have to be the same. To be firm, you don't have to be inconsiderate. To be in charge, you don't have to be oppressive. To be right, you don't have to be rude. To rectify, you don't have to be demeaning. To be religious, you don't have to be self-righteous. I leave you in conclusion of the series. I leave you with the dua of the person most beloved to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, his daughter Fatima, who often made this dua, Allahumma dhalil nafsi fi nafsi wa adham sha'anuka fi nafsi. Wa Allah, humble in me my estimation of myself. Humble in me my estimation of myself. And magnify in me Magnify in me the consciousness of your grandeur. Humble in me my opinion of myself and magnify in me the consciousness of your grandeur. Allahumma inna ka afuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anna. Oh Allah, expunge our sins. You are the one who loves to pardon, so pardon us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.